OK, everyone, welcome back. <clears throat> so this next session is actually a workshop. Uh, so we did FluentCon in Europe uh, earlier this year. And one of the big pieces of feedback that we got was you know, folks want some more hands-on sessions, be able to get their hands dirty, try things out, experiment with stuff. And so we thought, let's go ahead and, and build a session that does two things. One, exemplify some of the new behavior we've added within FluentBit. Uh, two, gets you familiar with uh, you know, other cloud native technologies. And three, something that you could try out live. So uh, if you have your laptop, awesome. Uh, we would recommend have a Docker desktop, Docker Compose. Um, and we can, we'll be walking out through the room. Uh, and of course, if you want to try this later, or if you're joining us virtually, uh, we'll have a GitHub repo that you could uh, go along and, and follow along for. So we have about like 10, 15 minutes of slides. Uh, the, the overall demo, getting the workshop running, should only take about five minutes. Uh, but then we'll demonstrate some of the capabilities, showcase how you can start to tune this within your, your own um, slide. So we'll, we'll be watching the Slack channel. We'll be watching. And if you have questions, we'll love to make this more of a, a discussion, workshop, versus us just, just presenting. So with that, let's get started with just some quick intro slides. Um, and so again, I'm, I'm Anurag, and also joined by Gibbs, who's from Chronosphere. So let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, so our agenda, we're going to go walk through FluentBit, Prometheus, and M3. Oh, am I starting? <laughs> not presenting here. There we go. OK, so agenda, we're going to walk through FluentBit, Prometheus M3, we'll, uh, give you a little bit of what the hands-on workshop overview looks like, what you might need on your laptop. Uh, and then within the workshop, we're going to set everything up, uh, walk through it. And of course, throughout the session, please, if you have uh, questions and answers, we'll be here. <clears throat> and we'll be looking at the Slack channels as well. OK, so I wanted to just talk a little bit about FluentBit and metrics. I, I know in the previous session, this was mentioned a little bit about, hey, metrics are, are brand new, and uh, we've been doing some, some you know, great things with them. But actually, with FluentBit, one of its main use cases when it was built in, in 2015 was for embedded Linux, things like wind turbines, you know, uh, other Linux machines, things that are embeddable in, in, in your house. Um, and the first plugins were actually all metrics. There were CPU, memory, disk, thermal. Um, and these are all what we consider log-based metrics. They essentially take JSON and send that over into your you know, log pipelines, whether to an output like Elasticsearch, uh, et cetera. The advantages with this is it's compatible with old plugins. Uh, it's also compatible with some of the more advanced fe features and functionality that FluentBit has, like SQL stream processing. But the disadvantages are as we see the evolution of this Prometheus ecosystem, uh, you know, it's not compatible. And it's also a little more expensive byte-wise. Right? You have JSON. JSON is a pretty heavy and uh, expensive compared to Prometheus format. So with FluentPit and Prometheus, in the, the integrations didn't just start with the latest release. We do have a lot of Prometheus formatted metrics within FluentBit. Um, and so we'll do a quick intro for Prometheus for those who might not be as familiar. And FluentBit internal metrics were exposable uh, via Prometheus you know, since uh, 2019 and, and before. So you can see how many input records, you can see filtering records, output, you can get storage information, you can get all sorts of various internals all exposed in, in a Prometheus format today. And with 1.8, we finally introduced those Prometheus metrics as an uh, exposable uh, format. And we have two main ways to do that. One is through Prometheus Node Exporter. We take the, the great work the Prometheus Node Exporter team has done and have ported some of that to FluentBit. So we can collect things like CPU, network, disk, file system stats. Uh, and then we have metric outputs, so things like remote write which is more of a push method for sending that data over to Prometheus or Prometheus compatible backends and Prometheus exporter, so if you're doing the pull model. In the workshop, we'll actually be running through both of those. But um, yeah, so however you need to get your Prometheus data, we can support that. 
And then the formats for the existing plugins. So things like you have forward plugin where you might be sending to Fluentd. We've made sure that that's compatible. We've uh, ensured things like influx if you're sending to influx backend with uh, line format. And the advantage here is it's, it's very lightweight and it's convertible into multiple formats. Uh, and the disadvantage, uh, it looks like that, that uh, thing got cut off, but it essentially it doesn't work with some of the more advanced features like SQL stream processing today. But um, you know that can always change. So with that, let me hand it over to Gibbs who can talk a little bit about some of the more metric ecosystem. Okay, yeah, so um, I know most of you probably are all very familiar with Prometheus, but just for those who are not, we're gonna quickly give an overview. So uh, Prometheus, it's a CNCF um, project. As you know, it uses a tag-based uh, metric ingestion format uh, and query language called PromQL. It also does metric ingestion, it's scrape-based, so pool-based metric ingestion. It's also very efficient at metric storage, so very good at storing metrics inside the instances themselves. And um, it does have the ability to kind of out of the box do visualizations and graphing of metrics. Most people choose to use a, another solution like Grafana, but uh, it does have that capability as well. And then you can do um, kind of aggregation with Prometheus using the Prometheus recording rules and then do any alerts on your Prometheus metrics as well using the Prometheus alert manager. And some of the advantages of Prometheus, which, is, which has made it so popular, um, first is that it's very easy to get started. So having a single binary for ingestion, storage, and query, and then you'd have another single binary for alerting. Uh, it's also the CNCF recommended monitoring tool. So that's made it have a very large community around it. So um, and that's you know made that exposition format that it uses widely accepted as well as the query language PromQL. And some other reasons why it has become so popular is because of its uh, dynamic endpoint discovery, which can be found on many different platforms, including, including Kubernetes. And then it has a very large ecosystem of exporters, which are ex uh, essentially just existing software integrations. Uh, and most major software projects, especially open source ones, have these existing integrations. And there are huge lists of them on, on the uh, Prometheus uh, docs. So um, we're gonna, in part, as part of the workshop, we're gonna use M3, which is an, um, an open source metrics engine. It was created back at Uber in 2016 to help with their metrics monitoring use cases internally. And now it's used by many other companies, including Chronosphere, which uses M3 as its backend. But just to kind of quickly run through um, the architecture of what M3 looks like at a high level. So you have three main components in here. We have the ingest and kind of downsampling tier, which is the M3 coordinator. Then we have a distributed uh, custom time series database called M3DB. And then um, on the query side, we have an optimized query engine called M3 Query. So we'll be spinning up as part of the stack an instance of each of these, or a, a, node, a node of each of these with like a single node of M3DB. And then typically how um, metrics are sent into and out of M3 is we have on the, on the right side of things, we can accept both Prometheus metrics um, through remote write, and then we also can accept uh, carbon uh, or graphite metrics as well from SASD. And then on the read side, you can, again, send queries in using Graphite or PromQL through Grafana, and then you can also kind of alert um, on your metrics via the alert engine through the coordinate, or through the query tier. And so, yeah, so I think I just kind of ran through a lot of this, but um, some of the, I guess, the key benefits of uh, M3 are in some of the design choices around, around it were to be very uh, large scale. Um, and that's because it was built back at Uber. So, and you know, to meet that level of, of scale uh, was, a, was a requirement. So it does have the ability to accommodate, you know, billions of time series um, metrics per second. It also um, has a lot of high reliability 
design uh, choices as well. So using replication um, of each of the metrics um, and that kind of leads to having any fault tolerance. So if anything does go down, you'll have some backup copies of your data. And then in terms of performance, uh, we do use a, a reverse metric index inside the, the DB tier and also kind of a very um, efficient compression, uh, compression algorithm. And that kind of makes it so your, your metrics can be um, re, you know, uh, retrieved very quickly and makes it very efficient for storage. And then, yeah, cost efficiency as well. That kind of, I guess, that kind of falls under that as well. So, um, just some of the key, I guess, features of M3 there. Okay, and then that's, I think that's all for our slides. So, I don't know if we want to send this link out in the Slack, if that's easier, but if everyone wants to go to the Fluent uh, repo in GitHub, and then there should be the M3 Workshop Fluent Conf um, folder inside there. But I can I can send it into the Fluent Slack. That might be easier. Okay. Oops. Awesome. And I guess just a show of hands for the folks in person. How many folks are going to run this uh, locally right now? One, two, three. Awesome. I'll just uh, come around and, and uh, make sure everything goes well. And for those those three who raised hands, does everyone have uh, like Docker desktop Docker post? Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, the README in, in here should be pretty um, should have everything you need. Kind of goes through a stack overview, any re prerequisites you need to get it up and running. Um, and then there's like the step by step instructions. But again, like Anarog said, it shouldn't take too long but um, I think we'll have plenty of time to play around with everything once it's up and running. Yeah, and uh, I guess just to walk through the architecture uh, a little bit, right, we're, we're gonna be deploying out uh, Prometheus. Uh, we're gonna we'll be deploying out Fluent Bit. We're gonna be deploying out the coordinator, uh, and we'll be deploying out uh, Grafana as well. And so the Docker Compose will go ahead and spin all of these things up. It'll make sure everything gets connected as well. Uh, and then on the Fluent Bit side, we can walk through the configuration, see what it's doing, how hard is it to go and configure kind of these Prometheus node exporter metrics. Um, and then hopefully on the Grafana side, when we go visualize that, everything just shows up as you would normally expect with something like, like node exporter. So with that, let me go ahead and do two things here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just walk through the configuration. Then we will go ahead and do Docker Compose up. Uh, launch everything. We'll kind of walk around, make sure everyone has, has everything good. We'll check on the Slack channel for those joining virtually, make sure things are, are great. And then we'll reconvene in like 10 minutes after, after that, see uh, what, what we ran into with, uh, with running everything. So first, let's walk through the configuration um, for FluentBit. And with FluentBit, this is what, for those who might not be familiar, what that configuration looks like. Uh, there's been a lot of work to make this very, very simple, easy to understand, high readability. Um, and you'll see these big brackets that denote what this uh, might be doing. If it's an input, it's an output, is it reading data, is it sending data? And in this case, we've added this input, which is node exporter metrics. Uh, we're going to give it a tag. So all the data within FluentBit, even the metrics, are tagged with metadata, which then says this is where it's going to route to, this is how it's going to be sent out. And then we have two outputs. Uh, the first output is for Prometheus Exporter. So if you're scraping from Node Exporter, uh, you might want to expose these metrics uh, on a port with a listening address. You might want to add labels. So labels can really help with the queries. We'll show some PromQL queries uh, here later. And then also we support remote write. So if you want to go ahead and send this to a service, um, you know, say the M3 service that's running locally, or even other services, uh, hosted services. So if you're using things like uh, hosted Prometheus, managed Prometheus by a vendor, uh, typically they'll accept Prometheus remote write. Okay, so you know, what we'll go ahead and do is I'll switch into the root of this uh, directory after doing a git clone. And very simply, I'm just going to do docker compose up. And 
it's going to go ahead and start. Uh, both M3, provisioner, coordinator, query, Flimpit, and Grafana. So this should be a very simple step, uh, but ideally what is happening is we are running Fluentbit, we are starting to capture those metrics, we are plugging in both to the uh, scraping and we're also sending that data to M3 where it'll be uh, searchable and accessible via Grafana. So uh, we've gone ahead and run this command here. We're gonna take a quick 10 minute walk around, make sure everything is, is running well and we'll reconvene um, and we'll check the Slack channel as well. Thank you. Yeah, so we were walking around. It looked like uh, most folks got, got it situated. Uh, again, this should be really quick. So uh, we've, we've made the workshop so you can kind of turn key and then start doing some exploration after it is hopefully working. Um, so here we had run the Docker Compose up uh, about 10, 10 or so minutes ago. Uh, some quick corrections, again, for those joining virtually, uh, the local host in the readme was 3030. It's actually 3000. Um, and so let's go ahead and move over to that. Let's go ahead and log in, localhost 3000. Um, and actually for most folks, it should uh, give you a quick uh, uh, username login. You can use admin admin, you can reset the password. And as part of this, we wanted to use the exact same node exporter dashboard that you typically find um, when, when you use Prometheus. So, when you log into Grafana, you can come into the dashboards. You can take a look at them, and you'll find this node exporter full dashboard. And then within this, you'll automatically see that data loaded up. So what has happened is Fluentbit, again, was configured with the node exporter input. And on the output side, we had two ways to capture that data, whether you want to scrape that data via Prometheus exporter, or you can use the remote write um, uh, to, to M3. And we can look at the last five minutes of data. We can look at you know, what's going on here. Uh, and you know, your, your dashboard is, is uh, filled out here. So if folks have uh, you know, other metrics or uh, types of metrics they want to collect, this is an area that we're always looking to improve from a community standpoint. Um, and then from an ease of use, right? the idea is to get you started as quickly as possible and as fast as possible. So let's go ahead and just check if there's any questions on the Slack. Nothing so far. So next what we'll showcase here is maybe some uh, quick PromQL queries and some labels. We'll pass it off to, to Gibbs. You can maybe showcase some of that within, within Grafana, maybe what you can do with some of this data after it arrives. Let's see. Well, the one we typically just do is the up command. Where's the query? Explore. I think you can go with the explore. Which one? Okay, so typically I just run the up command just to see everything. Um, is that going to run? Okay, well, you can at least see two of your instances here. Do you have other queries you'd like to run? I think the other piece is right when we configured Fluentbit as well as you could add labels within uh, Fluentbit. So we can always use those labels um, as part of dashboards, as part of filtering. Um, and so in the node exporter side as well in the dashboards, 
there's a couple of drop downs there where you could say, hey, I want to look at potentially labels that match a specific app profile, a particular environment. Um, and so the main thing we wanted to just showcase here as part of this workshop is we're not doing anything like too fancy, nothing that's super fluent bit specific that it prevents you from utilizing all of the uh, um, processes that you might have built on Prometheus before. Um, so if you already have Node Exporter, you have all the alerts defined out, you have uh, everything uh, going for it, you'll be able to quickly go ahead and, and basically plug FluentBit into that ecosystem. And then secondly, right, if you are expecting to traverse and explore the data, you haven't really had too much experience with, with Node Exporter or Prometheus, it's, it's pretty simple to get started, right? There's a really large ecosystem around Prometheus, really large amount of folks and tools out there to, to kind of help explore that data. So we're gonna go ahead and hang out on the, the Slack here for, for a little bit more and uh, just make sure that, that things are running well for others. Uh, but other than that, we'll, we'll go ahead and answer questions, things about metrics, uh, and then we will be breaking here for lunch right after. So we're the only thing that stands in your way. Awesome. Yeah. So th thank you. Thank you for for joining in. We'll again. Everything's on the GitHub. So if you want to try it later, you haven't had a chance to try it. Uh, it's all available. And yeah, maybe we made it too easy with just a single step. <laughs> but Awesome. Yeah, and uh, for the for the recording, yeah, it was saying, hey, I have a lot of Raspberry Pi. I've been trying to do a lot of Node Exporter setup, and what we can do here with with FluentBit uh, looks looks a, a little better. So, yeah, that's that's great news, and uh, this is something where we want to keep on building as a, as a community for for the metrics integrations. And so, if you have those requirements, you have those needs. Uh, we've had folks come and say, hey, I want to be able to measure from my logs, how many 400, 500 errors uh, potentially as metrics, so we can add those stats as things that we expose internally. So yeah, we're, we're super excited to, to keep building here. Okay, uh, I will uh, keep on checking the, the Slack here for, for any questions, otherwise we are happy to, to end a little early, uh, give back some time uh, jump into to lunch. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs>